In today's video, I'm ripping out a faulty Omi Home Pro EV charger, a sealed unit that can't be repaired once it fails. I'll show you exactly what we found when I opened it up, a few surprises from the original install, and then I'm going to replace it with a brand new Simpson & Partners EV charger. We're going to go through the removal, the install, and why this is the charger that I recommend instead. A couple of weeks ago, I got called out to this faulty Omi EV charger that simply stopped working. Next faulty charger, guess what it is? And there was absolutely nothing that I could do about it. And in this video, I'm going to show you and explain to you why I don't think you should buy an Omi Home Pro charger and why you should spend a little bit more money on a more premium charger like the Simpson & Partners that I'm installing today and the benefits of doing that. I'm also going to tell you all about the process that my customer had with Omi trying to get this fixed. Frankly, it wasn't very good. And we're ripping out the entire installation and starting again. There are so many issues with this installation that yes technically tick a box to say it's okay but standard wise for an electrical job it's pretty poor so this here is the omi home pro ev charger one of the problems with this is it's a completely sealed unit so i can't get inside this to replace any parts so when this goes it goes in the bin. And that brings me on to waste disposal, which we'll talk about a little bit later with what you're supposed to do when you get rid of an old EV charger. One of the other super annoying things about these chargers is because it's a pre-flexed unit, the cable you install has to go into a junction box first. And when I looked at this job originally trying to find the fault, I thought there's definitely gonna be moisture in here. Bone dry. Also, they have used Wago connections, which I believe in the instructions, it states not to use. So be aware of that. I know they're super convenient and there's been no signs of damage or anything on these, but just be aware of that. After discovering there was no moisture in this, I then went on and carried out my testing and basically there's just nothing coming out of this unit anymore. And my customer contacted Omi who they got the install done through. The way that worked is they contacted Omi, Omi got a reputable, a reputable installer to come and do the job for them. And then when this has failed, they've contacted Omi and Omi have just simply said, that's between you and your installer, who we can't get hold of now. And there you go. Anyway, waffling. So anyway, because this is a sealed unit and it's pre-flexed, the install cable is only this long. So if I want to install another charger, guess what? I've either got to reuse a junction box, which looks naff, or I've got to install a new cable, which is what I'm doing today. Customer's choice. Doesn't want all this. It looks so untidy. Look how rubbish this looks. And it's on the cheaper side of installs because we have flexi high tough cable installed for the supply and a separate Cat5, which is just tie wrapped along the cable. Looks super tacky. As I go through this video and show you bits, Leave a list in the comment below of all the things that you think's wrong or what you think should be done better or what you would do better. So as you can see, this is a completely sealed unit, but I saw online somewhere, someone said that if you take this cover off here, well, there's a vinyl somewhere, you can get to some screws. So this, we're gonna sacrifice this and see if we can get inside this and see if we can see anything that's wrong. So stick around to the end of the video. I just knelt in a slug, it's, it's dead. So when you get one of those cheaper installs, this is what you're gonna find. This is what you can end up with. It's this flexi, it's, it, this is just a rubber three core cable. It's not even a high tough. That's proper crap. And then you get a Cat5, which is just jammed inside the cleat with it. Otherwise, it just, it just looks rubbish, you know? So when you get that cheap quote, expect that. And the tragedy of this is my customer said that this wasn't even a cheap quote. So whoever you are, 
your rubbish. I think the message here is really get the spec of what's going to be installed at your house for your install. Yeah, we'll do. Thank you. Top customer. Also, the reason this was here is because they drilled out, inside out and blew the crap out of the brickwork and then just chucked all this white mastic crap everywhere to try and hide the crap job that they've done. They could have just drilled in. Genuinely, I don't think I've ever seen an EV install done with a black flex cable like that. Is anyone else doing that? Let me know in the comments below. The cable that I'm using today is Doncaster Cables EV Ultra. I'll show you what this looks like inside in just a minute. But to all the installers out there, there are a lot of copies of this cable. Unless it says Doncaster Cables EV Ultra, it's not actually EV Ultra. So these cheaper alternatives, just bear that in mind. If you're gonna spend the money, don't spend it on cable that comes from China that may say that it has some sort of BS standard, but who's regulating that? Why not use the cable that's made in this country? Doncaster Cables absolute the nuts. When this was installed, they used the cheapest EV charger consumer unit on the market. It's a WCED, just an RCD, no surge protection, no cable support glands, no cable support glands. So again, just not very good. I'm gonna give you some direct comparisons with the existing install and what I'm doing here today, just so you can see the difference. The old consumer unit here, just got an RCD in it. My new one here, we have a main switch, we have a surge protection device, which this one doesn't have. We have a spare way, a double pole bi-directional RCPO, and another couple of spare ways, which means I, this now is future-proof or if my customer needs any other circuits in the future, or maybe a secondary EV charger, the capacity is here for that. If you're installing a separate consumer unit for an EV charger, or you're getting one done, ask for a consumer unit that's a little bit bigger with an additional spare way. It might save you some money in the future. Now, when it comes to the meter tails, which are these cables here, which supply the consumer unit, the existing ones are 10 mil. My ones, they're 25 mil. That allows for that extra capacity for additional circuits. The old install had this Cat5 cable here running aside the rubber flex cable. My new EV Ultra has the Cat5 integrated inside, which gives a nice cleaner finish. The idea of the Cat5 is to install a CT clamp for load curtailment, which takes up one pair, and you have three other pairs, which can be used for a hardwired ethernet connection or solar and battery CTs. Sometimes the mortar just isn't good enough for the spit gun. I've got a couple of good fixings, but otherwise when this sort of thing happens, it's just back to wall plug, screw, <sighs> clip. I'm feeling so This absolute beaut is the Simpson and Partners untethered charger and we have, oh, what colors are these? The dark gray and the mid oak lid. Look at that, that's lovely. And installing this one is a piece of cake. Keep watching, I'll show you. To remove the front cover, all you need to do is undo two screws at the bottom and there is a third one, which you need to remove to remove the next piece. So just do it at the same time. Remove the side brackets and then the top just slides off. 
So this charger here looks very similar to the Anderson Quartz. This one came out first, but they are different. If you haven't seen the Anderson video, I'll leave that in the link in the description below. Go check it out. It might be worth a watch. Where this different, where this diff, where, where this is different? Cable entries for a start, bottom entry there, rear entry there. You can drill those, put your stuff in gland in, mount it to the wall and then bang your cable straight in. Easy peasy. You can still get your grips to nip, nip this up. Lever terminals, the other one had lever terminals as well. Couple of connections here for the CT. Absolute doddle this. I really like this charger. And if we compare this to this, non-maintainable rubbish as far as I'm concerned. Whereas this, if you're a customer, and something goes wrong with this, this PCP board, if there's something wrong with that, we can just swap that out rather than having to replace the whole unit. Just look, just spend a little bit more money and get a board and get a charger where parts can be replaced. It's gonna pay off massively. The Omi, I know like loads of them perform really well. And if you have an, have an Omi and it's going fine for you, great, wonderful. I don't wanna slag them off too much, but from an installer's point of view, long, Longevity of the charger when it goes wrong you're done for basically and if you don't want that junction box there for the new charger get something like this So with this charger, all I need to do is work out where I want to strip the cable back and pop it straight in. Bosh, all done. So that is the Simpson & Partners, absolutely lovely charger. I've never had an unhappy customer with those. Windy, sorry. And they're a pleasure to install, but right. Shall we have a look at that Omi charger and see if we can get into it? Yes. So I've never tried this before, but apparently there's a vinyl on the back. And if you get that off, then there are some screws. And I found that out just from some digging on the internet. Oh, here we go. There is a vinyl bit there. Oh, it's stuck back down now. I found the screws. And I put my tools away. To get them back out. Right, for those of you who have never seen it inside, an Omi Home Pro, neither have I. Let's see what's in there. It's pretty basic. Right, and this is the thing that annoys me, is this is down as a sealed unit. It's not a sealed unit, it's in two bits. It's got a lid, right? It's just got some screws in it that they've covered over with a sticker. And this is supposed to be a non-maintainable sort of EV charger. Well, if that's the case, why can I do that? That could have been the problem there. I could have just replaced that. And there's just another one there. That can be replaced as well. That is the thing about this Omi charger. I know if something goes wrong with the Simpson and Partners, then the chances are they're going to be able to help me diagnose the issue and we're going to be able to replace the part. This lot, they just want you to have a new charger and then you need to safely dispose of this also. You can't just throw this in the bin. This needs to go to a special waste trade place for electronics. So bear that in mind. Whose responsibility that is, mine or the customers, I don't really know, but I'm gonna take care of it in this case. But, so, there you go. 
Simpson or Partners or the Yomi. Simpson and Partners. Subscribe to my channel.